Okay, welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is seismic design according to Eurocode 8 in RFIM 6 and RSTAB 9. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the Dluba software company. For instance, the Dluba website, the German and English webinars, customer projects, etc. I've been working for the company Dluba software for 12 years and I will be the moderator today. Uh, my colleague Stefan will do the presentation and Stine will help with answering the question, but they can introduce themselves. Yes, hello, my name is Stefan Frenzel. Um, I'm working here at Lubal also since 12 years. Um, I'm working here in the product engineering for the dynamic uh, add-on modules and of course in the customer support. So. Maybe some of you know me <laughs> or not. Um, yeah, okay, I will present today the webinar and uh, Stina, yeah, she will of course answer the questions. So Stina, it's your turn. Hi, from my side, uh, my name is Stina Effler. I'm working for Dlubail since 2018 and I'm responsible for the development of the dynamic add-ons and I'm working in the customer support. I will answer your questions today, so please don't hesitate to ask them. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams so that the attendees can see the full screen. Okay. You can ask questions via the control panel on the right side of your screen. You can show or hide it with the arrow here and enter a question here. And Stina and I will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar because there are too many, you will get an email afterwards. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email your questions to info at dubai.com. To the agenda today, Stefan will start with this example, yeah, a building of concrete and steel, and he will do a model analysis yeah, using this example. Then follows the seismic design according to the response spectrum analysis. Then uh, yeah, he will show how you can use the results for the structural component design and he will apply the add-on building model. For example, yeah, the shear walls, the forces in shear walls. Okay, then I hand over the screen to Stefan and he can start with the live presentation. Okay, um, thank you, Andreas. So yeah, then I think we can start here. Hopefully you see my screen and Okay, you see here a normal concrete structure. So it's a, my, my, for example, it's a, it's an office building, and here we have of course, uh, of course, a steel uh, frame structure, um, which is added to this concrete building. And for this one, or for the whole structure, we want to do today a model analysis and of course a response spectrum analysis. You see, we have here, of course, different types uh, of surfaces or of thicknesses of the surfaces. So we have walls with 180 millimeters uh, of thickness. We have here some um, plates with 300 millimeter of thickness, and of course, different cross section types. Yeah. So that's yeah a regular building in this case. Um, and at first, I want to show you what we have already or also in the uh, structure. Therefore, we can see here self weight. Um, self weight is, of course, it's the self weight of the structure, therefore, we don't activate here the loads at all. But you can also activate these loads, therefore, we have here an option for self weight. We can activate this or not, it's just a structural self weight. Uh, another load case is here, of course, an additional self weight, so which comes, of course, for the concrete here in this case, or for the concrete surfaces, there we have an additional self weight. And of course, here's some imposed load cases for the roof, uh, for the second floor, for the first floor. These loads we want to use also then in the model analysis. And of course, you see here a snow load, which looks empty, okay. And yeah, we can create a snow load, that's no problem. And of course, a wind load. For the wind load, you see that we have here already also uh, like, like a surface load, yeah which is applied here on this opening. 
So in RFM6, we are able to apply also loads on such openings, and therefore we have here a special surface type, which is called um, which is called trans load transfer surface. So this load transfer surface is able to transfer the, the surface load to some elements. For example, I activate this one, or I have, will have a look in it, and here I can see. Okay, I will um, try to transfer the load to these lines. Yeah, that are the lines, of course, uh, from the floors, and therefore it's possible to use such a load transfer surface. Here, of course, we have a wind load case also in the other direction. These wind load cases we want to use afterwards to compare the results between the earthquake calculation and, of course, the wind calculation. And maybe we we can or we will be able to use the wind calculation for the um, for the checks or for the design checks afterwards. Okay, I will deactivate the load transfer surface here in the first step because we don't need it directly. And then, of course. I saw that we don't have a snow load, so we want to create the first a snow load. Here, we just type in 0 0.68 kilonewtons per square meter as load. And of course, it should be assigned to this surface. Oh, wait, I have to delete this at first, and then I can choose it. It's surface 25, and therefore, I will have also now my snow loads. So, the next step is that we want to do, of course, at first a model analysis for the structure. And to do this, uh, or if we want to do this, we have to activate the add on module model analysis. Uh, we can do this really easy because we just have to go here in the navigator data, and here we have basic settings. And in the basic settings, we are able to choose the add ons, what we want to use here in the program. Oh, I have to deactivate the first steel design because we don't need it at first. And here we have the dynamic analysis part. You see that we have here now model analysis and response spectrum analysis for uh, RFM6. And you see here some great out um, add ons. These add ons will come in the future, so yeah, they're not already, uh, uh, um, they are not already uh, finished, and therefore we. Uh, just create out them, so that's just for you that you know what will come in the future. Our first step should be that we want to do a model analysis. So we have to activate the add-on model analysis, and then we can go through the standards, because here these standards are really important for us, because at first we have to classify or to classify um, the, the the weights from for for the earthquake or for the model analysis. And then we have, of course, to classify the dynamic analysis settings. So which uh, response spectrum or which additional or which national annex we want to use, for example, for the Eurocode. Here you are also able to choose, of course, another dynamic design analysis. So you can use, of course, the American standard or you can also use some other standards. What you want to use. Um, sometimes it could be that we have new national annexes for, from a new year, so like here from 2021, last year for Germany. Is it also possible to say, okay, we want to see uh, also the um, the old standards here, for example, 2011, yeah, and that you can do here with this button. In our case, we want to work, of course, with the national annex from 2021. And that should be all here at first, what we want or what we have to do. So we activated now our add-on module. And the next step is that we have, of course, to create here um, the calculation of the model or that we, that we have to create the, uh, the eigenvalue calculation. So how we can do this. Maybe you know it from the old often 5, you had to open an um, an additional module where you have to give in the, the input data. Um, here in RFM6, we work just global, so that means we don't have to create or we have, don't have to open an add on module, so we can do it here directly in our navigator. 
therefore we have to create here at first a new load case and this new load case uh, has a category and for this category of this load case the analysis type is, a, is standardized as a static analysis. Here in our case we want to use of course a model analysis because we have now here a model analysis because we activated the model analysis in the add-on modules and therefore we are able to choose of course an analyzer setting for our model analysis and we are able to import masses from a load case or from a load combination. At first here we want to um, change the model analyzer settings therefore we can use this button here the edit button and for the edit button we can say okay we want to have just the directions x and y because we want to do or we want to do afterwards an, a response spectrum analysis and for a response spectrum analysis we want to use just the x and y direction for the mass metric settings and of course for the eigenvalues. The number of modes should be here 30 at first because I know the structure that's why I use here 30 <laughs> and of course the other settings are not so important for us so the mass conversation type is clear normally you need just the set components of the loads and we don't want to neglect any mass so we want to use all masses of the structure in this calculation. Then we can say here okay and now we are ready with the model analysis settings. The next step is that we have to import our masses from a load case or that we will have to import completely masses for the calculation of the eigenvalues. So therefore we have of course the option to choose here a load case or to use a load combination. Yeah? But in our case that is it not enough because we need now of course the, the loads or the masses according to our design code Euro code 8 and we can now or we are able here in RFM6 to create this design situation and therefore we just have to switch here to the next step it's called also design situation and here we can say okay oh, I can delete these ones at first we don't need sorry for this so we here we create a new design situation and in this design situation we are able to choose here seismic, seismic mass combination. That means for us the program can use now from your um, design code the formulas like here for the Euro code 8 and can of course um, create load combination according to this design situation what we can use then afterwards in our load case or in our model analysis setting. So here we can click on close. That's now at first all for us because we can now go completely here to load combination and the program will create directly a load combination for our uh, model analysis. If we switch here to assignment we can see okay here the value 0.3 is used. Of course the snow load we have to use the snow load in Germany I think if you use the normal Euro code you don't have to use it so without a national annex but of course that depends of course on the national annexes for each country. Here you see that we have now a, a FC value and a, a fee value yeah and these values of course um, are important because uh, it could be that these values are smaller or bigger so, but how you can control this, that's also really easy. You can go back to the load cases <clears> and if you are uh, in the, if you are here in the uh, load cases and in your imposed load cases, then we have of course an additional setting which just comes if you activate the add-on model analysis and for this, this addition, additional setting you can switch between roofs and other floors so and that means if you use for example a roof then this c value is another value than uh, for another for other floors and that means um, that this uh, that the loads which you import could be smaller or could be bigger yeah and here you see that we have of course the additional setting for our load for the roof of course we say that's the roof yeah and for the second floor and for the first floor is another floor 
if you use here, of course, also the normal standard euro code without national annex, you have here also these values and have also some different values for that. So that's just in Germany that you have here, of course, roofs or other floors. Okay, then we can go back here to our load case and we create before our load combination it was made automatically and here's it now possible to choose of course our load combination it's load combination number one and for this load combination or we want to use this load combination uh, for, for the model analysis it means all loads which are in this load combination are calculated as masses and just the set direction is used of these masses so if you have, for example, wind loads, wind loads are never considered in such a calculation because they are horizontal loads and, and, and they don't have um, parts which are working in that direction. Okay, then we can click here on calculate all. The program now calculates the or meshes at first the structure. Then you see that the program will calculate all load cases. Uh, here we have a multi-core. Uh, calculation it means uh, in, my, in my case I have eight cores, eight CPU cores, and these eight CPU cores calculate all load cases um, in one way. Okay, the result looks like this. So at first we have here now the result in our navigator results. We see here our national frequency from first to the 31, and of course I have here the option to have a look on the mode shape and of course on the masses. You see, you see here in the graphic, if I if I rotate it a little bit, that I have for example now here my biggest value for the deformation, and that means if I have a look here in the table, I have here many frequencies. But the important thing for an earthquake calculation is normally the effective model masses or the effective model mass factor. And you see that the first seven eigenvalues are not so important for me. Yeah? That are just local eigenvalues which are here in the steel structure. For me, the first uh, important value is here the eight, or is the eight uh, eigenvalue, and the other ones, of course. And it means for me, I need here nearly 30 eigenvalues to reach the maximum of 96 or 95 percent in x or y direction. And that means for me, okay, I have to calculate 30 eigenvalues. Maybe it's not so easy for bigger structures because if you have to calculate more than more eigenvalues, then the calculation takes, of course, longer and the performance is not so nice. Um, for this case, normally, it could be, or it could be also, that you don't reach the 90%. Yeah, it could be, okay, you calculate 20 eigenvalues and you don't re reach the 90%. And it means for you that you have to increase the values and you have to calculate more eigenvalues. But in our case, I want to show you what we can do if we have such a problem. So here in this example, we have 30 eigenvalues, but normally I want to calculate less than 30 eigenvalues. And therefore we go back here to the load cases, go on and did. And here I just copy my load case. And it means, okay, I got a complete copy of the load case. So it's a model analysis. It's the same, the same loads are imported, yeah, but and the model analyzer settings are also the same. But in this case, I will create, of course, a new model analyzer setting, and here I just want to calculate 10 eigenvalues, just in x, y, and z direction. So that's nearly the same option like I had before with the 30 eigenvalues. And we know that the, the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth eigenvalue could be important for us, but I never reached the 90% with these with this three eigenvalues. So, um, and therefore, we have here now the option uh, in the settings so to neglect masses. Here we have, of course, three different types. The first one is, of, of course, no neglection. We don't want to neglect any masses in the structure. Then we can, of course, neglect all masses in fixed nodes or line supports. Yeah. But here, be careful just in nodal loads and more just in, no, uh, in nodal and in line supports, not in surface supports. Yeah? And then we have the last option, user defined. And user defined is the one what we want to use. If you activate user defined, you will get here a new tab, which is called neglect masses. And for these neglect masses, 
we choose now, of course, our uh, members from the steel structure because the masses of the structure are so small that they are don't that that they are normally not so important for our calculation because the concrete building gets, of course, higher values and therefore it's important to uh, consider the concrete structure but not the steel structure. And then we get, of course, an object list. And for this object list, I'm able to choose, of course, just directly here um, the members. So I want to have this member, this member, and this member also. You can say here, okay, click here also and okay. And now, of course, I can calculate my load case number 10. And now the important thing comes, of course, because uh, now I we will have a look on the calculation results. And we see, ah, okay, we have 98% in each direction now. And we did this with just 10 eigenvalues. So that means for me, this is, uh, of course, more effective for me because I don't need to calculate 30 eigenvalues or 50 eigenvalues or whatever. And here, of course, I see directly, okay, my first eigenvalue has is just on the concrete building, the second one also, and my steel structure don't get any eigenvalue. I get here, of course, deformations, but these deformations are just coming from the from the concrete building because, yeah, it's a hinged it's a hinged structure, yeah, a hinged steel, a hinged steel structure, which which of course gets the same deformation like this wall here at the end, yeah. But to have a look and to control is to control it. You have, or you are able to have a look on the masses here in the program. Uh, if you activate this, these masses, then you can have a look here. For example, I will go here in the in this uh, view, and you see that the program will create, of course, a mass ball. So we call it mass balls in each FE mesh element. And of course, for the members. We don't have any masses, so we have always a zero value. That means for us, these members uh, are completely not used for the calculation. So are, the masses of these members is not used for the calculation, but the stiffness. And it means for us that um, these uh, members don't get an eigenvalue, a local one. So we have just now global eigenvalues for our structure. And that's the important thing here in this case. Another thing is that you are also able, if you have a look on the mode shapes, that you are also able to scale the mode shapes. Yeah, Maybe scaling of the mode shapes could be important for you if it's some technical work or something like this. Um, and therefore, you are able to change here the scaling of the mode shapes. Now from five uh, in the add-on, was it like this, that you had to do it in the input data and you had to recalculate it afterwards. And that was normally not necessary, and that's why we changed it here directly and bring or 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 created this option here in the results. Yeah, and here you are able, of course, to scale to change the scaling. Yeah, if you change the scaling, of course, the table is also changed. Um, normally, we use here always U as one, and that's okay for us. Um, because here we get the highest deformation, and the highest deformation is always uh, one, and the rest of the structure gets, of course, then the other values. Okay, that was the model analysis of our structure. I think you saw here at, fir the first, the fir at first the calculation of it, and of course the input data, and then we want to come to our next step. Because with our model analysis, what we did now here in the load case number 10, what is our important one, we can go here back in the base data and can, of course, activate that on module response spectrum analysis. The response spectrum analysis, maybe you know it from often 5 that we had an add on module which is what was called uh, equivalent, equivalent loads. And the response spectrum analysis is nearly the same, but here in the response spectrum analysis, we don't give you the loads at the end, so we give you directly the results at the end. And that is here, of course, the new thing, because in this case, you save a lot of performance of the program because you don't have to um, show the, the loads on each FE mesh point. So you get directly the internal forces, and you, can, you will be also able 
to do an analysis with this uh, internal forces directly. So here it's activated. The standards are of course the same. So that means we will use our national annex Eurocode 8 from Germany. And that's all at first. And here we do it like for the model analysis. So here we have to create at first a new load case. And in this load case, we don't want to do a static analysis or a model analysis. We want to do here a response spectrum analysis. With this response spectrum analysis, we are able to use, of course, or to import the load case number nine or load case number 10. So we are able to import our model analysis. In our case, we want to import, of course, the load case number 10, because here we got our 98% of the equivalent load factors. And that would be nice for us to use it because here we had also just uh, 10 eigenvalues. So next step is of course here, we have to create our response spectra. Oh, yeah, I, I will yeah, I show you at first the response spectra. So um, to create a response spectra, of course, you have just to activate the direction. The program will then automatically create a response spectra according to Eurocode 8. But you are also able to change this, yeah? So um, what values well you have to put in, that's also the important thing. <laughs> and therefore, I want to show you our web page. Uh, on our web page, you can find under solutions via snow load, wind speed, and seismic load maps, the correct value for you, yeah? what you want to use. In our case, we go at first on seismic because we want to, we want, we need the values for the seismic uh, calculation. And then we want to use, of course, the German annex. It's Eurocode 8 part one. And now you see here, of course, the whole map for the earthquake loads in Germany. And of course you can enter a location. I will enter here Leipzig because I do my webinar here in Leipzig and I think it could be good because here we have, we are on the border to a seismic zone, but it's not a real seismic zone, yeah? This map looks uh, stranger than it is. And of course, here we have now our reference peak ground acceleration, which is, uh, which is here with a value of 0 0.169 meters per square second. Um, this is a small value. If you go to other countries, of course, you get much higher values, yeah? So, in our case, okay, we want to use this value. Then we can go back to our RFM and we just have to type it in, type it in 0 0.169. And that's uh, that's all at first, yeah? So our ground type, of course, should be AR. Here it's also could be also possible to change the ground type. You can find it here directly also if you go, um, the subsoil class, yeah, and for the subsoil class STR, yeah, we have normally nothing like this, NA, NA, so I took R in this case, it's okay, and that's all. Okay, that should be our, uh, our setting for the standard, yeah. You are also able to change the behavior factor or whatever that's, that that's depends, of course, on your structure. In our case, we take here the standard values of 1.5. That's okay for us. And then we can click here on okay. Uh, if you have other changes, like you want to scale up the whole period or the whole diagram, then you can here also scale up yeah, if you need this. The next step is that we can go to the selection of modes. And here you see the program now has uh, selected all 10 eigenvalues. And we have 98% or 99% in each direction. The Euro code says normally that you just need 90% and at least you need, of course, all eigenvalues which have a higher effective model mass factor than 5% uh, in this case. And that's what we can do here also just by clicking on deselect modes and use this uh, this value. So we need to, we want to use the 5% value. The program is already also over 90% in, the, in some of it, yeah? But we just need four eigenvalues for that. 
And that's the important thing. So that's also a performance point, just to use the eigenvalues which you need and not all eigenvalues. Then we can go back on main. And here in the main tab, we have to use, of course, our spectral analysis settings, or we have to change them. Therefore, we go on edit, and in the edit button, you will come to the to the settings, and the settings are changeable, of course. Um, the first one is, of course, the combination rule for the peri per periodic response. So here you are able to use the SRSS rule, the CQC rule, or the absolute sum rule. So the euro code says here in this case that you have to use the SRSS rule or the CQC rule. In some cases, you have, of course, to use the CQC rule, but it depends on the values um, or on the difference between the eigenvalues, between two eigenvalues. Yeah? Is this difference really small? You have to use the CQC rule. Is the difference high enough? You can use the SRSS rule. That's, of course, what we want to do. We want to use or we want to save, of course, all results of the select modes. That means the program should save these results and, and uh, because otherwise the program will just give the end result of it. And that's maybe not so good for us because we want to show or we want to know everything uh, and we want to use also the sub results for that. Um, the next thing is if we have combined our uh, our directions in X and Y direction with the SRSS rule, for example, here, we have to combine then the X with the Y direction. And therefore, the Eurocode gives us also some uh, options. Here, we have at first the SRSS rule again, which is not so effective, I would say. And then we have, of course, the scale sum. If you activate the scale sum, then the program will take automatically the 130% rule. But here you can be, you can, you are able also to change the 30%, for example, to 40% or whatever, what you need. Uh, it's according, it's not according directly to a standard, it's according to, to your standard or to, to your behavior in this case, yeah? Okay, that's all for this. And then we can click here on okay. Um, for such a response spectrum analysis, the Euro code or other design codes also say, that you have to consider the accidental torsion. Uh, this accidental torsion, you can, you are also able to activate this here directly, and therefore you just have to click here on. You have just to click it on, and the program says, okay, five percent for each direction. Then the program will give in, give you here the building length, or you can also use it, um, or you can type it in manually if you want. And so the accidental torsion is completely uh, considered in the calculation. So how the accidental torsion works is really easy because uh, internally, of course, the program will create also FE, uh, FE loads or loads on each FE element. And the accidental torsion is considered like this, that we create, of course, a small moment by the eccentricity and the force from the earthquake on each FE mesh element and bring a small moment around the global z-axis on it and that's the accidental torsion this one is of course completely done automatically you don't have to consider this so next step is we calculate all now the program you see will calculate sub results for load case number 11 it's because that is also a change in the program or a change in the program from often five to often six because here in RFM6, we are able to save sub results for in load cases. So we don't need load case because in, in, in RFM5, we had just load cases and we had for each load case one result. And here in RFM6, we can save more than one, one result in, uh, in the load case. And that's, of course, a big effort because we don't need uh, result combinations at the end and we, we are a little bit smarter in this case. So, the program calculates now load case number 11. And of course, I have here an envelope, the scale sum envelope here. Yeah. Then I have here the 130% rule, the 30 100% rule. Maybe you know it from often five. You got a, a result combination for the x direction, a result combination for the y direction, result combination 130 and 3100, and uh, 
no skates on because you had to do it to do it at the end manually. Here in RFM6, we have it of course exactly for for all results, and that's of course the effort here. But you are also able to have a look here in the results directly. You can of course look in the internal forces, for example, the normal forces, and you can also have a look at the end for the scale sum. So that was in this case at first the response spectrum analysis. Um, and now we want to have a look, okay, how we, we have normally now or we need normally now um, a combination for because we have just a response spectrum analysis, but we have to combine it normally with a self-weight and with some imposed load cases. And here in RFM6, we are able to do this also automatically. And how to do this automatically is also new because in RFM5 you had to do this manually. And here in RFM6, we go back in the load cases and we create here a new design situation. That's the easiest way normally. In this case, we want to have a seismic design situation, ULS, ultimate limit state, in this case. Oh, wait, it was my fault. Edit. Design situation. We need a new design situation and not the old one. We call, if we change the old one, then the results are gone away. So we take here the ULS at first. And for this design situation, we are just we are, we have to be or we have to combine this this these loads now with the result combination. That means we can just add the results because our sub results are already there in the load case, and we just want to add them together at the end. So if I go now to the result combination, you see the program creates here the result combination. I can have a look on the uh, on the envelope. And then I see, okay, my load case one, the second one is in, my imposed load cases are in, the snow load is in, but the wind load is not considered, yeah? And my load case number 11 is also in, and here the scale sum of the envelope is used. Here I'm also able to change it. Here I can also use the 130% rule, or I can use just the X direction if I want to have this. This sub results tab here is just activated, if you are here in the base settings, or if you if you activated the sub results here in the base settings, if you don't act, if you don't if you if you deactivate here the sub results, then here in the result combination is it not possible to change this? And so the maximum result is always is, is always used. Yeah, that's just as an info for you um, that you know that you are also able to change this. So now we have here our uh, results for this. Of course, we can now calculate this. It should be no problem. And of course, we have now our result combination number one um, with the complete results for the for the seismic calculation. So, but now I don't. I already not know uh, what I have to do here with these results. Do I need to use these results for the design or not? Yeah, and normally in Germany or maybe also in other countries is like this that you have to compare these results with your normal uh, ultimate limit state um, calculation. And therefore, we go already also on edit and create here a new design situation and say, okay, my new design situation should be this one here, my ultimate limit state. Yeah. And afterwards, I want to compare these two ones with the base shear. So, and therefore, we go, of course, on OK, result combination we don't need directly, but we have to calculate it all. You see that the program now calculates all, com all load combinations here, uh, eight load combinations at one time. Then I think it will take some some seconds and because the program has to calculate now here 100 load combinations and yeah, that will take some seconds but here maybe I can say also something to this 
here the program will calculate, of course, now all load combinations. And you saw that these load combinations are really, uh, or, or that they are created really fast, yeah? So that's also a big effort of R56 here in this case, because you don't have to wait so much time for that. Um, here in this case, the program will calculate, of course, eight combinations at one time. Um, problem is here, of course, that I have load increments in it. It could be that it takes a little bit longer, but um, that depends always on the structure because you have some diagonal uh, members which could could fail, yeah, and that could be here the problem. But we will wait a second and then hopefully the program will give you give us a result. Of course, now we have the result for that. And of course, here we can have a look now on the results, but I have already the same problem like before. I did here my static analysis. And of course, I did here my design situation. I have here also my design situation for the whole structure. But I'm not sure, OK, what's with my base shear in the structure? Is my base shear too small, or is my base shear for the ULS bigger than for my earthquake analysis? And that's now my issue. And therefore, we have here a new add-on because otherwise, in RFM5 or here in RFM6, it's also possible to use a result beam. Yeah, that means I have to create here a beam. Yeah, that's uh, added lines. And here, of course, I'm able to create here a member. And here, I'm also able to say, okay, a result beam. Here, I can, of course, uh, integrate all surface and all members of the structure to uh, member internal forces. And then I can, of course, compare the shear force of this member with these two result combinations or design situations. But in our case today, we want to do it in a little bit other way. Because here we have in the base settings also a new add-on, which is called building model. And for this building model here, is it possible now to give in or to calculate the base shear directly? So I activated now the building model, and the building model, you can find it here at the end. That means here I have to create stories now, because I need some points where I need the base shear, of course. And therefore, I can go here on new building or a new story. That means the program will open here, of course, a, a small a small window. Here I can have also a look on my structure, and here I can say, OK, my first floor is 350 high. And of course, we don't need a rigid diaphragm because we have uh, all surfaces in, all, all floors in, and therefore we don't need this, the story slab stiffness. The story slab stiffness is just normally if you don't uh, activate your real floors because it's also possible just to calculate the winds and uh, the, uh, the, the, the um, the walls and of course uh, the columns, and therefore you can use this. Here I want to create also two other floors. You saw that I just clicked here on create new higher building story, and the height of course is three meter fifty, three meter, three meter, three point five meters, and that is my uh, difference in z direction. And of course we have already the same value there. Then we can click on OK. And now, of course, I see here my stories, but where can I find my results for that? And that's now the, the important thing, because you are able now here to go here in the static analysis, for example, and you will get here, of course, a new overview results by the stories. The results by the stories for my ULS, you can find in here, yeah? That means my maximum base here in X direction, in global x direction is 328 and 240 in the y direction yeah and yet now i can also have a look on my uh, seismic design situation and here i have now 275 and 183 yeah that means these two values are smaller than my uls calculation and then i know okay if these values are smaller, I don't have to consider 
uh, my uh, or I don't have to consider the earthquake for the design according to any standard, for example, according to Eurocode 3 or to according to the Eurocode 2 for the concrete. So I can use my normal um, my normal loads and don't have to consider the earthquake calculation in it. Um, what's also important here is that you have for this uh, for this for this building model also the option to have a look on the displacement for the interstory drift. So that is uh, also important because we want to bring in the future an add-on module which is called pushover analysis, and therefore you need, of course, the interstory drift. And here's, but here's it also important to know what to do uh, by hand calculation now, but maybe in future we can do it also automatically to calculate um, to calculate if you have to consider the second order in earthquake analysis or not. Yeah, that's also some point. That is also a point for that. So the building model will of course expand in the in the future and will of course uh, get other options for that. Um, but here that are the first things what we have in the building model. You see also that you have a center of the mass and the rigidity, so you know the mass in each floor. That's also an important thing. And of course, the, uh, of course the forces in the shear walls, because the program is able to create internally a result beam for each uh, for each wall in the structure and to calculate the shear force for that. And with the shear force, you can do easily a design for the shear wall, or you can easily do a shear wall design at the end. Yeah. Okay, that was my presentation for today. Andreas, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Thank you for this nice presentation. Yeah, for all attendees, if it was too quickly for you, uh, that's no problem. You can use our recording. We record every webinar and you can use also the model. We yeah, provide the model on our website for download. I would like, like to show you where you can find it. Just a moment. I have to share my screen. Okay, on our website, lubal.com, you can find the webinars under news and events here below the webinars. Now, as I said, we record all our, our webinars. You can search for any webinars by scrolling down or enter uh, yeah, a full text search. That's today's webinar. And in the next days, you will find the recording here in the middle and you can already find the model to download here and you can go through the webinar step by step if you want. If you don't have got our uh, yeah, RFM 6 or RSTAB 9, you can download our free trial version. Here above you can find the free trial version of RFM 6 and RSTAB 9. Both programs contain all add-ons and you can test it for 90 days. Okay, yeah, that should be all also from my side. Maybe a last hint, when you leave the webinar, where is a small survey? Yeah, you can score us, uh, just uh, note that the worst um, score is one and the best score is five. And you can answer some questions. For example, if you have you know, wished for future webinars, but if you haven't, yeah, you can enter a minus or something or a sign like that. Yeah, okay. Then thanks to Stefan again for his nice presentation. Thanks to Stine for answering the question. Yeah, and thank you again for your attendance. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.